So this is 0, 4, n through its n exponents extended. The goal of this lesson is to simplify expressions in exponential form. So we've already talked about some of the rules of exponents, but here we are going to define them. So if we have a to the m power times a to the n power, if you have the same base number, as long as a is the same, so if it's 7 and 7, we can do that. But if it's 7 and 3, we can't do that. So it has to have the same base. This is actually going to equal to the a to the m plus n. An example being here is if I have a to the fifth, times a to the third, that's going to be equal to a to the eighth power. And the reason why is because there's five a's and then there's three a's, which we add them up, which is eight a's. So it's a to the eighth, <coughs> a to the eighth. Now if we look at the next one, when you have division, instead of adding, we're going to subtract. So the rule for this one is we're going to have a to the x minus y power. So our example being, is if we have the same numbers, so a to the fifth and a to the third, we're going to simplify this to a to the five minus three, or a squared in this case. So those would be our answers here for both of those. And if you remember, uh, what happens is like the a's would reduce here. So there's five on top, three in the bottom. Three of them would reduce on top and bottom. There's two left on top. So to do this, we're going to simplify with rational exponents. We're going to use those rules of adding and subtracting. So let's look up top here. So on the top, we're going to first add the tops and multiply the coefficients. So the coefficients in front we can multiply. So it's 2 times 3, which is going to be equal to 6. And now it's going to be x and to the 2 thirds plus 4 thirds, which is 6 thirds. I did not simplify that yet because we would have to unsimplify to do the next step. So this is x squared, but when you do x to the one third on the bottom here, remember we're going to subtract these. You add the ones that you multiply, because they both have x as your base, then you subtract the one that's division. So when you simplify this, this next step, you still have that six, but now it's x to the five thirds. And that would be my answer. Now doing this next one, very similar, you're going to look at the coefficients of 5 and 3. So you start with that, that's 15. Nothing changes there. Now we're going to add the other one. So we have a to the 2 tenths, which we have to simplify in a little bit. And then we have b to the 6, 6. Remember you add this, 1 tenth plus 1 tenth is 2 tenths. Then you have 1 6 plus 5 6 is 6 6. So now simplify this, because this is to the 1 fifth, and this is just b, because it's b to the 1 power. So in this case, our answer would be 15a to the 1 fifth and b. And that would be my final answer. So continuing on the rules exponents, we're doing the power rule of exponents here. When you have a power to a power, this is where we're going to multiply them. So a to the m times n, as long as you have this base a here, and that's m to a power with these parentheses of n. For an example here, let's do, we have a to the fifth to the third power. And this is going to be a to the 15th, because five times three is 15. And the reason why this occurs is we're saying we have three a to the fifth. So this would be a to the fifth, and then a to the fifth. So this exponent just says three of these. So now we have three of these, and now it's multiplying, which you add them, five plus five plus five, which is 15. So this checks off why it works, and that's actually how you would prove it over the long term. So let's look at this. Let's simplify these expression with rational exponents. And if we use rational, um, it should be fine, but if it looks harder, we could do it the old radical way as well. So if we look here, these don't both have the same base. So we have to make sure they're both 5. So to change that, let's do this. We're going to have the fourth root of 5 to the second power, because 5 squared is 25. And then we still have the sixth root of 5, and it's to the first power. Now to write this as a rational exponent, we're going to take this 5, this base of 5, that's our important part here, 
We're going to have 5 on top and 5 on bottom, but to what power? So this exponent 5 squared, we're going to do 5 to the 2 over 4. That's how you set it up. So it's 5 to the 2 fourths power. Very similar, it's 5 to the 1 over 6th power. So this root outside is your denominator, it's your bottom. This power inside is your top, your numerator. So it would be 5 to the 1 6th power. Now in this case, you have it set up very nice, the same basis, and now we just have fractions. So all we have to do is take this 5 to the half power and 5 to the sixth power and subtract them. So remember doing that. Um, if we rewrite this, I think it's 5 to the 3 6, because 1 half is 3 6, or 2 fourths is 3 6. It's just equivalent fractions. And you have 5 to the 1 6. And then you would subtract those, so you have 5 to the 2 over 6, or that's equal to your final answer here of 5 to the 1 third. And that would be my final answer, or if you want to write it back in radical form, which is the third root of 5, um, both of those are correct answers, and that's how you would do those. Now in that case, if we do it the same way, it might be a little bit more tricky on this one, so let's just do it the radical way, which is fine. But my heads up hint is, remember, when you have a square root of x squared, or whenever you have an even power, a 2 or a 4 or 8 here, and an even root, you're going to have an absolute value out of it. So, and that looks like this. You'd have the absolute value of that x. When you have even root, even power. So that's kind of something you need to remember because that's going to be important for this next example. So if we split this one apart, we're going to use the radical form of splitting it apart. So I'm going to have x to the 30, and then I'm going to have the sixth root of x to the first. I split this apart into 30 and 1 because we can do 60, or 30 divided by 6. That's a multiple of that. And then we're going to split apart the next one as well. Um, which is a legal move. So now if we do y, the 6th root of y to the 18th, and then just whatever's left over, the 6th root of y squared. Do you see how I keep keeping that 6 here, the 6th root? Don't forget that 6th root. If you do forget it, you'll do it incorrectly. So now this is where this power rule comes in. We have an even root, even power, even root, even power. So the answer when it comes out has to be as an absolute value. So we're not going to do this with rational because it's easier doing it with a radical form. So when you do that, you should get that this is x to the fifth, and we have to put an absolute value sign. <clears throat> now, we can't do anything to this. We can't do anything to this. So we're going to move that to the end of you over here. So we're not going to look at that quite yet. But let's look here. So now we have an even power, even root again. So what comes out of this has to be in an absolute value. <clears throat> So when we do that, we'll have an absolute value, and then 18 divided by 6 is 3, so y to the third here, because you're going to divide these, which is using that rule of rational exponents. But we wanted to remember this rule, that's why I'm keeping it like this. So now we have to tag along these two parts, which we can't simplify. So we still have the sixth root of x and y squared for my finalized answer here. So let's evaluate these. I'm going to show you two ways to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it mathematically, and then I'm going to show you how to use a calculator. So first off, 625 to the 1 fourth power. Very easily done, because you can just rearrange this as 5 to the 4th power, because 5 to the 4th is 625, and that's to the 1 fourth power. Now using that power rule, where you multiply, this is just 5 to the 1st power, or 5. So our answer here was just 5. Very similar, um, when we do this next one, remember when we have the negative exponent, it flips this upside down. So we have, in this case, we're going to have 1 over the square root of 81. Because this 1 half power is a square root of 81, but since it's 1 negative, it flips it, or it's the reciprocal of. So in this case, we're going to just get a 1 over 9. For our answer one ninth. Now on your calculator, very simply, with a calculator, 
All you have to do is write 625, and then you do a caret symbol. It's up arrow, and then you type in a parenthesis, and then 1, and then the division sign, and then 4, and then you close the parenthesis. And wham, you'd have an answer, so, which in this case is 5. So make sure it works. So now the next problem, when you have 81, you're going to do caret again, and then you're going to have a parenthesis, and you're going to do a negative symbol, which is not the minus sign. So the minus sign's on the right side but by the divide times minus plus and enter. Uh, the negative symbol is right to the left of the enter key. So it's a little negative symbol, and then you're going to do 1 and division, and then 2. So 1 divided by 2. In this case, the division symbol is the division symbol, so it's right above the time sign. That is okay to use for that in there. So when you evaluate this, it's going to turn out probably a decimal. So it's going to be a repeated decimal of 0 0.11111, so it's going to repeat forever as 0 0.11111. Um, if you want that as a fraction, you're going to press the math button, and then you're going to press enter, and then enter. So press math, enter, enter, and it should turn out the problem or the answer of 1 over 9. Basically, it says math, and then it says frac, which is fraction, which you enter that, and then it says answer, frac, and then you're going to press enter again, and it'll take that answer and turn that into a fraction.